Okay. All right, welcome back, guys. Hope you had a good break, a long one. Okay, uh, let's just continue from where we left off and you're not. So we, uh, we are learning about, uh, you know, from God's word about healing and ministering, uh, divine healing and deliverance. Um, so what we'll begin to learn in this session is um, basis for ministering, healing and deliverance. Basis means what are the fundamental basics that we need to remember or we need to know when we are ministering in healing and deliverance, okay? Um, one of the first things is that we need to, uh, again, we are reiterating this point that it is God's nature to heal us, right? It is in his heart. It is his intention. It is his desire to see his children uh, live a whole life, right? And otherwise, he wouldn't have a covenant name called Jehovah Rapha, which means he is our healer, right? So we learned very clearly that everything he does his word and his will will be consistent with his nature okay so god who is known as our healer will not suddenly become who you know who want to send sicknesses to us as well okay that no, that is not consistent with who he is are you with me All right so our view of sickness disease and uh, you know demonic oppression uh, must come from the understanding that our god is our healer and he is our deliverer okay are you with me? All right. Um, the second basis for healing and deliverance is the cross. What happened? Okay. The second basis for ministering, healing, and deliverance is the cross. Okay. Um, Isaiah in chapter 53, let's go to Isaiah chapter 53. Um, Isaiah lived approximate, and he's saying this approximately a 760 years before Jesus um, was born. Okay, about 760 years eight, uh, before Jesus, the prophet Isaiah, he writes this uh, in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. So remember, this is the second basis, the second point for basis for ministering, healing, and deliverance, which is the cross, okay? Um, let me read it for us. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Okay, why don't you just underline that if you can, if you have an actual Bible. Okay, I want you, uh, the reason is to look at the choice of words there. Okay, surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Okay, yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Okay. Um, so the Hebrew word grief, one of the reasons I asked you to underline grief is uh, the word, uh, the Hebrew words that's mentioned there is sickness and disease. Okay, uh, the Hebrew word that's uh, uh, used for grief is translated into sickness and disease. Uh, that's why when Matthew uh, he quotes the same verse in Matthew chapter eight, verse seventeen. In Matthew chapter eight, verse seventeen, uh, it says then that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by prophet Isaiah, saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Okay, now look at what Isaiah writes. He, he says, he took our griefs and our sorrows. Matthew is quoting the same scripture, but he's using different choice of words there, right? He himself took, up, took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Okay, another word that was uh, one of the words that says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh, we all know the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. Okay, uh, it's not just you know peace it doesn't mean just calm. It means everything uh, about your whole well-being, and that's what it means. Okay, shalom is your your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, your whole being. 
and that's what peace actually means and it says that uh, that he has given it to us okay uh, first peter chapter 2 verse 24 once again quotes that who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree guys remember we are talking about the cross okay the power of the cross and one of the basis for ministering healing and deliverance okay when you pray for people okay uh, you're not just praying without knowing understanding what you're praying about okay you realize and you know your identity the authority that god has given you and then what he has accomplished on the cross amen and so first peter chapter 2 verse 24 it says who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed okay so on the cross so many things happened and one of those was that he took our sins our diseases our sicknesses our pain our shame our sorrows our grief are you with me right uh, let's read some more scriptures uh, colossians chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 colossians chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 it says having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us which was contrary to us and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. And he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. I love that verse 15. Okay. Uh, he has taken it out of the way. Okay. The law said, you are guilty, 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 guilty. The verdict is death. Right? You and I were supposed to walk down that, uh, you know, that the road, Golgotha, Calvary, take the cross, uh, die on the cross, because that's what we should, we should be getting. But Jesus did it on our behalf. He took our cross. But this verse 15, it says, where is that? He just didn't take our sins on the cross. Verse 15 says, he disarmed the principalities and the powers of darkness. He disarmed. What does that mean, disarm? Armed means what? Huh? Arms. Hands. Weapons. So, if you, so, for example, I mean, this is a language that's used, say, by say, police or military armed forces. They kill. They call it right. If you're armed, mean that means you're carrying a gun or a weapon, a knife, whatever. That means this person is armed because he's carrying a weapon. Disarmed means that means the weapons have been taken away from you or your powers. And here, the uh, the scripture is saying Jesus disarmed. That means. He stripped every authority that the devil had. He disarmed the powers and the principalities. He just didn't do that. He made a public spectacle. He made a public scene. It's like, hey, look at this. You know, everybody is saying, everybody knows that the Satan is defeated. Right, so beautiful the way and powerful the way the scriptures mention it. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. How did this happen? Because of the cross. You with me, guys? Right, and Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. Okay, I'll read that one more time. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. 
one more scripture for us in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12. Isaiah 53 verse 12. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. He will divide the spoil with the strong. So what that means is he will share his victory with us, his church. So let's pause here for a quick second. We minister healing and deliverance. We operate and we do everything based on the finished work of the cross. Are you with me? Right? And that is quite powerful. Knowing, and we just when we realize that, as what Colossians says in chapter 2, verse 15, knowing that this enemy has no power over us. Right? One of the most uh, embarrassing parts of our, some of the Christians is that uh, we keep uh, losing to an enemy that is already being defeated. Okay, nobody understood that. Okay. But. <laughs> it, it's very embarrassing, isn't it? Losing to someone who's already lost the battle. How do we manage to do that? Jesus has already won the battle for us. He's given us the blank check, right? The cross is it. He's won the victory. And we need to live life, you know, in that authority that Jesus has paid the price on the cross. Uh, we need to have a revelation of that wonderful, wonderful cross of what on which Jesus died okay um, and the other part and the other aspect of the cross is the blood of Jesus everybody say the blood of Jesus okay Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 Colossians 1 verse 13 and 14 it says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Everybody say, through his blood. Okay, so in whom we have redemption through his blood. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. Hebrews 9 verse 12. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. But with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all, not with the blood of goats and calves. Why is that mentioned there? Why is the Hebrews writer mentioning that with the blood of goats and calves? Because in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, in the tabernacle, they would enter with the blood of the goats and calves. Are you with me? Yes, and it was that blood that was poured on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. And so, when John the Baptist sees Jesus for the first time, not for the first time, I'm sure he's seen him before that, but the Bible tells us for the first time, uh, he says, okay, behold the Lamb of God who, it's very important, who takes away. Okay, that means it's not just a covering. So in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, the blood which was poured on the mercy seat was just a covering for the sins. And what Jesus paid in his, with his own blood is he took away. That means there's nothing more to cover or hide. Are you with me, guys? Okay, so the blood is powerful because it was his blood of the sinless Lamb of God that was presented in heaven that made a way for us to enter. Are you with me? Yeah? Okay. Uh, let's just move on to, uh, to another section. Uh, basis of ministering healing and deliverance, which is the word in, in your notes, which the page number would be 47? Okay. 47? Okay. Okay, thank you. So in your, in your PDFs, it's uh, page 47. 
So I'm, the page numbers are different in this book. Okay, so what was the second uh, basis for ministering healing and deliverance was the cross. Yeah, and in the cross we learned about about the cross, the power of his cross, and the blood. And now we're looking at the third point, which is the word. Okay, everybody say the word. Okay, um, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Right. So and. An important truth we need to embrace with all our hearts is the power of God's word. God creates through his word. God carries out his work through his word. Okay? One. God creates through his word. He spoke and the worlds were created. Right? He said, let there be and there was. Okay? So there is power in his word. Let's look at uh, Psalm 33. Verse 6 and 9. Psalm 33, verse 6 and 9. It says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Verse 9. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Okay, for he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Hebrews 11, verse 3. It says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Okay? So the power of God is resident in his word. Right? His word in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it states like, for the word of God is living and powerful. So we looked at three scriptures. What's the first scripture? Psalm, Psalm 33. What does it say? By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Okay, it's not even words, guys. It's like, it's not even plural, it's a singular. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Right? And the starry host by the breath of his mouth. Verse 9, for he spoke. Everybody say spoke. Say one more time. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Right? Uh, I, don't know who, I don't know who said this, but it says, uh, I can explain gravity. Oh. No, I can explain that gravity causes the uh, the you know the planets to go in motion, uh, but I cannot say who set them in motion. I forget I forget who quoted that. Uh, but and in this word is he says it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Imagine, guys. I mean, Isaiah chapter four, 39 or forty. It says he holds the entire universe in the span of his hands, like. Somewhere, yeah, okay, the whole universe is... Isaiah writes that. He holds the entire universe in the span of his hands, and we are still discovering, you know, okay, there's this galaxy, there's that galaxy. The farthest we've gone, I think, is say, 33 million light years. Uh, I forget, the Whirlpool galaxy is the farthest that the mankind has discovered. And that's not even the end. Are you with me? Right. Does anybody know the speed of light? You know, those online are googling it. Huh? <laughs> speed of light. No, oh, you'll miss your science class, huh? <laughs> Three hundred thousand kilometers per second per second. Three hundred thousand kilometers. Per second. So a beam of light can circle the globe, our planet, seven times in one second. Okay? A beam of light can circle the earth seven times in a second. It takes only eight minutes 
for the light from sun to reach earth oh 8 minutes is such a long time <laughs> if you you wouldn't say that if you want if you knew the distance between the sun and earth to say the least it's very far <laughs> it's like going from here to electronic city no no <laughs> it only takes 8 minutes i mean just think about it and then here's this god you know said let there be light can you imagine the explosion that would have happened when he said that you know uh, i <laughs> so i i i hear a lot of people oh, i wish i was there when god created the universe i was like no not really you know i don't i don't think you wanted to be there when he created the universe uh, it was it would have been quite a big bang you know what an event that would have been and then the psalmist writes you know by the word of the lord the heavens were made he spoke and there was he commanded and they stood fast amen it's his word i mean the psalmist is so beautiful and the scriptures time and time again talks about the power in his word and you know the how the clouds obey him and how the oceans will not cross the boundaries that he's marked god's like okay you will not go beyond this oceans like okay can you imagine so there is power in his word to say the least guys are you with me right um just to reiterate another scripture which we just read but hebrews 11:3 is by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible but it was by his word and again in hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 he beautifully writes for the word of god is living everybody say living what does that mean it's alive it's alive it's not just another book or pages or no the word of god is alive why because he is alive and why because he is the word are you with me right and so his word carries healing power god's word carries god's healing power psalm 107 was 20 psalm 107 was 20 he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destruction he sent his word and healed them okay his word is healing to our bodies a uh, proverbs chapter 4 let's go to proverbs chapter 4 if you have your bibles you can turn to it proverbs chapter 4 was 20 and 22 to 22 yeah Thank you. So, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Okay, pause. So, that verse starts off 20 it says, "My son, give attention to my words." incline your ears what does it mean incline your ears means so when you want to listen to someone you like you come closer isn't it okay say what you're saying you know incline your ears to my sayings don't let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart why answer is in verse 22 for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh okay so the hebrew word again for health now why do we keep using this you know okay in the greek in the hebrew this is what it means this is what it says in the greek and this is what it says in the hebrew um this is a side point okay i want you all to remember and i've stressed this uh, many times before there is a difference between reading the bible and studying the bible 
right there's a difference between reading the bible and studying the bible now the bible was written for us okay the bible was written for us so that we would read and we would be encouraged we would be edified we would be empowered but the bible was not written to us Are you with me it was written to a different audience in a different time at a different culture different setting different geographical setting different people who wore different kind of clothes who thought differently whose examples were different everything was different hundreds of years thousands and thousands of years ago right so there is a difference between reading the bible and studying the bible while bible was written for us it was not written to us the audience were very very different okay so with that in mind the word health the hebrew word for health uh, used there has health cure medicine deliverance and remedy health cure medicine deliverance and remedy okay so now with that let's just say read that verse for their life to those who find them and health cure medicine deliverance and remedy to all their flesh are you with me okay um, let's read this scripture uh, first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 now another scripture from john chapter 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god right and then it goes on to say the word became everybody say the word became flesh what does that mean it manifested right it just didn't remain the word like okay this is some sci-fi thing you know like alice in wonderland kind of a thing no the word, sorry the word became flesh it manifested right that means it came into action it was done something was done and so in our ministry our word the word should always manifest itself and and it and the bible talks about it right the apostle paul um, commended the thessalonian church for their receptivity of the word that was preached to them um, so look at first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 i'll read it for us Hi, Nina. I see your question. How do we explain servants of God falling sick and sometimes succumbing? The same reasons would apply? Yes, uh, Nina. So, um, the, yeah, yeah, you're right. The same reasons would apply, yeah. And, I mean, also just to add on to it, right? Uh, we see uh, even after a person is being healed or delivered from an oppression or from a possession or whatnot, uh, it's... It, it again comes down to our responsibility to how we continue to walk in faith and guard our hearts. Uh, you know, so just because anybody is healed from anything, let's say, okay, God healed me of my broken knee, I can move, I can jump and whatnot, that doesn't mean I can go jump off the building and nothing will happen. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So it's, I mean, a lot of things uh, are in, you know, uh, it comes down to our responsibility how we take care of ourselves we are not negligent we are not uh, you know uh, we have an enemy who wants to destroy us i think that is enough we don't need to be negligent uh, and not take care of ourselves I, I hope that helps okay so yeah first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 it says for this reason we also thank god without ceasing because when you received the word of god which you heard from us you welcomed it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of god which also effectively works in you who believe okay those three words are very important effectively works in you so the word of god which was preached just didn't remain 
Okay, uh, it's like a seed, right? One of the parables that Jesus uses, his words are like seed, isn't it? And it has to go deep, bear fruit, and, and all of that. So that's what Paul is saying. Okay, it just didn't remain as seeds in your life. Okay, it started working in your life. It became flesh. It is manifesting itself, right? So the word must be mixed with faith in our hearts, as Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 says. Okay, uh, let's read another scripture. Acts chapter, I know, guys, I know it's a lot of scriptures, okay? <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay, no? Okay. One or two people. Okay, Acts chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. It says, And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, uh, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Okay, if you have a pen and if you have an actual Bible, you can underline that. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Look at this, guys. Okay, it's, uh, this is awesome. So, Paul is preaching, and this man is hearing him preaching. Paul is observing. He's just looking at him, right? No, he's just looking at him. And just by looking at him, he sees, okay, this guy is carrying, you know, faith like gravity that it's pulling me to him. Are you with me? And that's what he says. So Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leapt and walked. I mean, that's the only conversation that is happening, right? Where Paul is telling, get up and walk. I mean, at least it doesn't record where it says where the leper asked, you know, heal me if you're willing, if God is willing, and all of that. The leper, sorry, the cripple heard Paul preaching and he, his faith was built. Okay, I believe that I can be healed. And then Paul kind of knew in his spirit and he says, get up and walk. Right? Um, so we need to have faith in our hearts to receive our healings, guys. Okay? Now, another important point, does anybody have any questions at this point? Any questions? So uh, God has promised renewed strength and longevity for all of us. Um, that is his promise, his word. Again, his desire for us is that we would uh, be healthy and live a long and happy life. Uh, long life. So, uh, so it's up to us. It's our responsibility to take care of our bodies. So let's look at some of the scriptures that supports that statement. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. It says, And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. 120 years, okay. Uh, Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 and 26. So you shall receive the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you, no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 25. Your sandals shall be iron and bronze. As your days, so shall your strength be. I want to read that one more time. Deuteronomy 33 25. Your sandals shall be iron and bronze. As your days, so shall your strength be be okay are you ready for more scriptures okay why don't some of you read it now psalm 103 verse 5 
who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, the next Job 33 was 25. His flesh shall be young like a child's. His he shall return to the days of his youth. Okay, one last. Let's read Psalm ninety verse ten. Okay, the days of our lives are seventy years, and if by reason of strength there are eighty years. Okay, so all of these scriptures is just uh, you know talking about God's desire for us like talks about longevity and strength okay um so i mean there was this classic questions we have this weekend school of ministry right which apc does uh once a month um so one of the questions was okay so how many years is god exactly god wants us to live <laughs> uh you know but so and then again we use all of these scripture to you know to give them an answer we started off with genesis chapter 6 verse 3 say okay back then the air was nice and all of that you know the fruits the water was not polluted and all of that and so yeah okay 120 years um you know and uh so now these guys are talking about psalm 90 verse 10 the days of our lives are 70 okay if we take care of our health really well you know 80 and then you know my grandmother is still alive 95 so <laughs> but the point here is that he wants us to live a long life right and then he renews our strength isn't it and david makes that beautiful prayer he says that you strengthen my feet like the feet of a deer are you with me right so he he gives strength uh, you know to us it is his word that carries us um okay so you know we've spoken about a lot of content today um, and I really don't want this class to just be about where I want to just drop all this content on you all and, uh, you know, give a lot of download and um, and f make sure that I finish this book on time. It's just that that's really not the point. But this is practical ministry, guys. Okay. Um, this course is practical ministry. It's God's desire. Um, there are people in the world who are hurting. Uh, there are people in the world who uh, who wants healing, who needs healing, not just wants, who need healing. Um, and it's how, what a privilege it is that you and I have been chosen to minister divine healing. Yeah, okay, it doesn't matter. All right. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so let's think about some of the things that we learned today. Uh, God is not the author of sickness and disease. He is not the source. Uh, it was man's disobedience. And then there is an enemy who adds to that list. right? Uh, and because of which we cannot afford to uh, not take care of our bodies as well. Yes? And then while we are ministering uh, divine healing and deliverance, we minister out of the power of the cross, knowing God's nature, his blood, and knowing that his word carries power. Are you with me? Yeah? Okay, let's just pray very quickly. Um, what I want to do is, uh, those for the, all of those online, if you know that there's a person who needs healing, uh, just mention their needs, uh, just mention their names, okay? And what they need to be prayed for. If you know anyone, if no one, that's absolutely fine. And for some weird reason, I think the camera has changed from that one to my laptop camera. <laughs> I don't know when that happened, how that happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's... Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, if Again, if you know of anybody in your family, your friends who needs healing, whatnot, can we just pray for them by faith right now? Yeah, let's just stand up to our feet. Because like I said, uh, I just don't want this to be about just theory and whatnot. Uh, now that we understand who our God is, who is... Sorry? Sorry? Huh? Oh, Nick. Okay. Really? <laughs> okay, if you know of someone in your family, uh, your friends, classmates, uh, who needs healing? Uh, let's just pray for them. Um,
Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we come into your presence. We come to the throne of grace by the blood of the Lamb, God. And Lord, we lift up all those who need healing right now. Healing in our bodies, Father, uh, any sicknesses, diseases, Father, those who are being oppressed. Jesus, we know that it is your nature to heal us. You are our Jehovah Rapha. You are our Father. Lord, you carried our sickness. You bore our disease, our grief, and our sorrows on the cross, our infirmities you took on, our cro on, on your cross, Jesus. Your word says that by your stripes we are healed. By your stripes we are healed. And so, Father, we declare the power, the wonder-working power of Jesus Christ over every single individual that is being prayed for right now. Whoever is praying for any individual right now, Jesus, we believe in faith. We come to you in faith, God knowing that your heart is filled with compassion, that you still heal today as you did 2,000 years ago, because you are our healer, you are the truth, Jesus. And so we declare healing. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and demonstrate the wonder-working power of the cross over every single person who needs healing right now, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We, we look to you right now, Jesus. We look to you and we, we worship and we adore you, Father. We are grateful that you took our, our shame, our pain, our guilt, our sorrows on the cross, Jesus. And we also know that there is power in your blood, God. You made a way for us to enter the throne of grace, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with your own blood, Jesus. You made a way for us. And so we say thank you, Jesus. And we plead the blood of the Lamb over everyone who's, who, who needs to be healed. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for what you are doing. I thank you for what you've already done. We give you all the glory, honor, power, and praise. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all for joining uh, me in prayer. Thank you, guys. Uh, so we'll stop the session today. Uh, stay care. I'll see you all next week, okay? Bye.